Welcome to the Ultrasound Artifacts module as part of the University of Washington School of Medicine ISIS Point of Care Ultrasound series. The purpose of this module is to review various artifacts seen during the use of ultrasound and to discuss methods to recognize the artifacts and use them as a diagnostic aid in tissue characterization and composition in some cases. Ultrasound artifacts are images that do not accurately depict the tissue being scanned. This includes images that are seen that are not present, tissue structures that are present which are not seen by ultrasound, or images showing tissues or structures with incorrect location and size. Some artifacts are normally present in tissues, such as comet tails, a type of reverberation artifact in a normal lung while some artifacts are clues to the presence of pathology, such as shadowing from gallstones. Several types of artifacts can be seen in B-mode, the regular scanning mode used to find organs and guide procedures. These include shadowing, reverberation, mirror image, ring down, and enhancement. We will also discuss how artifacts can arise during the use of color Doppler. Shadowing is caused by absorption of the ultrasound beam by a dense object in its direct path, in this cartoon, a rib. This object blocks the ultrasound beams from penetrating deeper in the tissue, resulting in an area of darkness on the screen. Shadowing artifact can be described as clean or dirty, and we will show examples of both. Clean shadowing can be a clue to the presence of gallstones or urinary bladder stones. The yellow arrows here show a dark, hypoechoic area of loss of signal deep to the hyperechoic or bright white circular structure of the gallstone that is within the gallbladder. Here we see another example of clean shadowing deep to a urinary calculus within the bladder. The shadow is dark, shown here with the yellow arrows. It has crisp edges and is directly deep to the hyperechoic calculus. The ribs, as seen here, also produce clean shadows. Dirty shadowing can make point-of-care ultrasound of the abdominal organs difficult in some cases. These shadows are caused by the air within the bowel, which scatters the ultrasound beams and makes it difficult to see what is deep to the air-filled tissues. These dirty shadows are often more gray, with less crisp edges. Gentle compression of the probe on the abdominal wall surface compresses the bowel, minimizing air and this can often slowly improve visualization by decreasing dirty shadowing from bowel gas. Here, the operator is gently compressing the abdomen using the ultrasound probe, and this causes the aorta to be better visualized as the hypoechoic or dark pulsating circle in the center of the screen. The vertebral body shadow is a curved, white, or hyperechoic rim structure in the center of the screen, with the two vessels in cross-section, the aorta and the IVC, as hypoechoic or dark circular structures superficial to the vertebral body. Reverberation artifact is caused when ultrasound waves enter the border of two tissues that allow very different penetration of the ultrasound beams, for example, between soft tissue and the lung tissue, which is air-filled. Ultrasound beams pass easily through the soft tissue, but not through air, causing the beams to bounce back and forth and confusing the ultrasound machine into creating artifacts on the screen that are not really in the tissues. Here is an image of a normal lung ultrasound with the small white arrows showing the bright white pleural line. This is the interface between the two layers of pleura, visceral and parietal. Superficial to this is a soft tissue, and deep to this is the air-filled lung tissue. The soft tissue above the pleural line is nicely detailed on the image, but the air in the lung scatters the beams, causing the picture deep to the pleural line to appear gray and grainy. The normal pleura is a dense structure that does not allow the ultrasound beams to penetrate well. This results in reverberation artifact as the beams bounce back and forth between the pleura and the lung. The pleura is seen here as a hyperdense white line, shown by the thick arrow, and the reverberation artifacts that occur in the normal lung are called A-lines, shown by the thin arrows. Each of these white lines is a replica of the pleural line occurring at equally spaced intervals, but does not actually exist in the patient's body. A-lines are an example of an artifact that occurs in normal tissues. Another reverberation artifact seen when scanning lung tissue is the comet tail artifact. On either side of the screen, we see the ribs with associated shadows. 
and in the center of the screen we see the pleural line as a bright white or hyperechoic line. Comet tail artifacts originate from the pleura and are caused by reverberation of the ultrasound beams hitting the strongly reflective pleura and then the air below. They appear as echogenic white parallel lines emanating downwards from the pleura. As the patient breathes, the pleural line slides and the comet tails flash into view. In a normal patient, one should see comet tail artifacts and lung sliding, which is the motion visible along the pleural line. In pneumothorax, both lung sliding and comet tails will be absent because the two layers of the pleura are not in contact. Note, the absence of these findings does not mean the patient has a pneumothorax, as other phenomenon can interfere with these normal artifacts. We will discuss this in more detail in later modules. To illustrate the next artifact, we will use a clinical vignette. A 65-year-old male presents to the emergency department with acute dyspnea. In this common scenario, you may wonder whether the patient is acutely dyspneic due to extra lung water due to a CHF flare, or due to bronchospasm and COPD flare. Bedside ultrasound can help. In the presence of alveolar filling or interstitial thickening, such as pulmonary edema, the ultrasound beam creates reverberation artifacts within the lung parenchyma. These are beelines, echogenic lines extending vertically from the pleura to the bottom of the screen that move with respiration. Beelines do not tell you what is causing the alveolar filling or interstitial thickening, pulmonary hemorrhage, or interstitial syndromes such as pulmonary fibrosis can also cause beelines, but in our clinical case, the many beelines suggest a CHF flare may be the cause of this patient's dyspnea. A diffuse A-line pattern would instead implicate his COPD. Ring down artifacts appear as bright white echogenic lines extending deep to metal clips or foreign bodies and other certain tissues. They can be a clue to the point-of-care user searching for a metallic foreign body and soft tissue. Clinically, we most often see ring-down artifact when we place a needle or catheter in a vessel, and it does not appear as a sharp point, but rather a point with a white tail emanating downwards from the metal needle tip, as shown here with the yellow arrows. Here we see ring-down artifacts that we can use to follow our needle tip during IV catheter insertion under ultrasound guidance. Our next enhancement artifact is best presented using another clinical vignette. A 28-year-old male arrives with blunt abdominal and chest trauma after a high-speed MVC. He is lethargic, tachycardic, and hypotensive with an oxygen saturation of 92%. He has a bleeding scalp laceration, decreased breath sounds, and a tender abdomen. He has many potential reasons to be hypotensive, including hypovolemic shock from laceration, pneumo or hemothorax, or hemoperitoneum. You decide to perform a FAST exam, or focused assessment with sonography and trauma, to search for hemoperitoneum. While viewing the bladder in the pelvis, you realize that the gain or brightness of the tissue on the screen deep to the bladder is very high. Here we see enhancement artifact or excessive brightness deep to the bladder, shown by the arrow. This artifact occurs when the ultrasound waves travel very quickly through a fluid-filled structure such as the bladder, and then the ultrasound machine is fooled into thinking that deeper structures should be brighter. When performing a FAST exam, it is important to turn down the far or deep gain to be able to discern free fluid deep to the bladder that might be missed if it is obscured by enhancement artifact. In this image, the blue arrow denotes an overgained area deep to the bladder where it may be hard to see fluid. The next image shows the same area with the gain reduced, and a better visualization of the underlying tissue. Again, here is an example of acoustic enhancement showing the artificially hyperechoic or bright appearance of tissue deep to a fluid-filled structure such as this renal cyst. The next artifact explains why this patient appears to have two hearts. The blue arrow here shows some tissue beating deep to the patient's heart. Mirror image artifact is rare but striking and occurs most often when scanning tissues near the pericardium or diaphragm. Due to errors in reflection off of these dense structures, a mirror image of a tissue can appear on the other side as illustrated here. In this example, the diaphragm causes a mirror image artifact of the liver parenchyma within the thorax superior to the diaphragm, shown here with the blue arrows. Switching gears, we will now discuss Doppler-related artifacts that occur when using color. 
The most common artifact encountered when using color Doppler is the appearance of color in a non-vascular structure due to movement of the transducer. Any movement of the reflector or transducer relative to the other is capable of producing a Doppler shift. Here we see the color artifact within the fluid-filled gallbladder due to movement of the probe. Be sure to hold the probe completely still when using color to distinguish a structure with flow. Doppler signals are generated by the reflection of ultrasound beams off of the moving red blood cells. However, if a B mode gain setting is too low or a wall filter setting is too high, you may not see the signal. Try increasing the gain slowly, as shown here, to increase the appearance of color flow within the vessel. Remember, the color in the vessel only reflects which direction the blood is flowing relative to the probe surface and the ultrasound beam. It does not denote which vessel is an artery or a vein. That is a clinical impression. Towards the probe appears red, and flow away from the probe appears blue. Artifacts in ultrasound can be mistaken for pathology or obscure pathology, and it is imperative to avoid these pitfalls. We have reviewed several common ultrasound artifacts, the underlying physics involved, and techniques to recognize the artifacts, and in some instances, use them for clinical benefit. The University of Washington Point of Care Ultrasound Curriculum Committee would like to thank Justin Andros and Isis staff for their help in creating this educational video.